folks, it's Dave Isaacs with you. And for Song of the Week this week, we're going to take a look at the James Gang's Funk 49. This is certainly an essential riff. <laughs> Joe Walsh, of course, on guitar on this. And this lesson is really on the main riff. I should mention, as always, that what I'm aiming for here is for you to get the basics of it. I am not uh, offering a perfect transcription, but the fundamentals of the song, and you can always choose to go deeper by just listening. And of course, YouTube is very useful when you can find live footage to see what somebody really was playing. We're starting off with this bending lick in the fifth position. It's really just straight up minor pentatonic, a third string bend from the seventh fret. Slowly enough that you get some grease on it. And then the pinky is gonna be here at the eighth fret of the second string. And this bending lick is really slippery, greasy. It's so much, it's one of the things I love about Joe Walsh's playing is the way he bends strings. And so you can hear this. Mechanically speaking, Notice how my thumb is over the top of the neck. Notice how my neck is angled upward. That makes life a lot easier. Notice how I have three fingers on the string. And look at the position, the way that my arm is angled a little bit to the side. And so I'm actually sitting really more on this part of the fingertip. And so my fingers, rather than having to stretch, simply line up. This is actually the best reach position. Not this, because this way, you've got to practically pull the fingers apart. You can certainly develop that reach, that's something people work at doing. But in terms of the natural reach of your hand, this now makes reaching an extension, just uncurling the knuckles, the joints, instead of having to pull your fingers apart. And so this allows me to comfortably reach three frets, and so I can then get my arm behind this swing inward applying a little pressure on the top of the neck to balance in the other direction. And so notice that this is an arm move. You can see my wrist doing this. Pinky. That second bend is almost pre-bent. So the string is already bent when I hit it. Let it down slowly and then when I get to the fifth fret here, I'm going to do the opposite direction towards the floor. Still raises the pitch. It doesn't matter which way we push the string. You're going sharp either way. But different sound. And with this index finger bend, I'm not trying to move more than a quarter tone. It's just a little movement, a little flavor. And now this is tricky to really get the sound right, but what we're going to do is have three bends of varying degrees. A full step, but catch it so it sort of stutters, and then a smaller bend of not quite a half step, or maybe a little over, and then somewhere between a quarter step and a half step. So just think of it as three bends, but you bend further the first time and then gradually less. That was tricky. And then that quarter step bend, so it's four notes. Blah, 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 is what we're aiming for. And then a little pull off lick. Still the fifth position, still minor pentatonic. I've got ring and index set up so I can pull off, snap down from the fingertip with ring then snap down from the index finger with the fifth fret and the same lick and it's kind of a throwaway I mean it's not meant to be super clean although certainly it's worth your while to be able to do that the whole thing is, is supposed to be a little ragged note there by mistake, but 
feels good to play it. Then we get the primary riff, or one of the two primary riffs of the song. And this is great to understand because it gives you an example of how to use partial chords and triads in a heavier rock context. What I'm doing to start with is a hammer-on on the third string from index to middle, fret 5 to fret 6. But I've also got a small bar. Again, I'm not swearing to the exact thing Walsh is playing through the whole song, but this is definitely the effect. If I have a partial bar on essentially 4 and 3 and 2, and I can hammer the middle finger from fret 5 to fret 6, what I have here is an A7 hammering into minor third to major third. And this form is essentially a triangular shape. Looks kind of like a D, but moved up and moved over. Except it's coming from an E-shaped bar chord with the pinky lifted to give us a seventh. And so we're just isolating string four, string three, string two with a smaller bar and not hitting strings we're not going to worry about. Now, we also want a certain amount of muting here, so that means that your left hand will release, your fretting hand will release. So that you can also get that chunky rhythmic strum. Now, in the same position, this is a very common figure, you've heard it in lots of settings, I'm going to take that ring finger, flatten it out to cover the seventh fret. Basically strings four and three, but it's not like you have to be so specific and make sure you don't hit the second string. So slowly, just bar with a hammer on the third string, up, down, ring finger bar, and then we move up to this bar, same figure or same position rather, just moved up two frets, so same position of the hand, I should say. Hammer, which is from actually a, a D triad, seventh fret, strings four, three, two, definitely three strings this time, and hammering the middle finger on the second string to fret eight, the ring finger on the fourth string to fret nine, and then coming back up. You could hammer pull, or I kind of like hitting it again, up to seven, because that way you get a good strong hammer on, but, and then back to ring here, so hammer five to six, click, flat ring, hammer, move up, hammer double, hit it, back to seventh, and the hammer. Now as far as this goes, up, down, up, 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 up, down, up. So notice, pick up, bah, accented downbeat. There's your primary riff, and then we have what we're gonna call the second riff, or secondary riff, which is played on an A and then a B. Straight minor pentatonic in A, starting with seventh fret of the D string. We're gonna move down D string, A string, seven, five, seven, five, cut it short jump down to the third fret, and then A bar chord, power chord. Not, not trying to bring out the whole thing, but just, so, seven, five, seven, five, three. Picking, I'm doing down, up, down, up, 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 down. You could do it all down, so, and it really sounds fine. Watch the rhythm. One E and a, two E and a. Then we move it up two frets, same riff on a B pentatonic, frets 
nine, then seven, down to five. Let's not do a seven sharp nine. Let's do a straight E seven. Seven, six, seven, five. C shape, right? Fifth position with the added pinky. So, from the intro. to whack it. This is not subtle. I mean, you could... And while you're learning how to get those chords to speak cleanly, if you find the bar is challenging, then don't rush it. I mean, really work with it. Keep in mind that the hand position is basically just this. The elevated neck will help a lot, particularly if you're using a Les Paul style guitar, like Joe Walsh played. And notice that my bar does require a certain amount of flattening the finger. I mean, I can do this, but that works better. So up here, for the bends, thumb definitely up. You know, maybe the way to do that is just to bend it, let it down a little. And I think that rather than... Sometimes I listen to it and my first impulse is to go for it one way and then I think about it and go, well, maybe we do it another. This is why I'm saying I'm approximating because if I was worrying about being a perfect transcription, that would be a whole other story. But I think I like these pre-bends and then leave it up. So... Still working with it myself, honestly. But I like the, again, the greasiness of that. And then. classic rocks that's one of the great classic rock riffs and again recognizing how we're using triads or of course this is not a triad it's a three note shape but derived from a seven what we have here is a seventh a third and a fifth a d triad d triad again going to a g triad and then Three shapes, but those are three primary shapes. You're going to use that a lot in rock and blues riffs. So this is a great one to know. It's lots of fun to play. I hope you enjoy it. Quick lesson on this one, but once you've got the basics, it should come together pretty quick. The hardest part is getting those bends to feel right. There is a specificity to how sloppy it is. It's not easy to make it sound that loose and have that much vibe at the same time. This is the great thing about playing tunes that are relatively simple, is that you can concentrate more on the subtleties. And I would be willing to predict that a good number of you, maybe even 70, 75%, feel like you're stuck or struggling because you're not going a little deeper. So the best thing you can do with these sort of basic, here's the fundamentals lessons, is to start with what I'm showing you and then go in there and listen. And you can feel free to say, you know what, Dave, I think it's this instead of that. That's cool. 
And you might find you listen, I've said this before, you listen to something once, you hear it one way, you listen to it the next day, you hear it another. Yes, there's an absolute of what somebody played, but the learning process is more fluid than you might think. And the fact is, the more you do that, the more you listen, the more you question your own decisions about what you thought it was or how it was played, the more you're going to grow as a player because you're doing the single most important thing, which is looking for what else can I learn? What else can I do with this? What else can I do on the guitar? As always, thanks for watching. If you don't subscribe to this channel, please do. If you're watching this coming from the blog, I hope you're on the mailing list, nashvilleguitarguru.com, and I'll see you next time.